All right. So in this video, we're going to be going through the neurological anatomy for the advanced anatomy class. So here is our half a brain. Okay, you can see the cerebral cortex. Okay, so here's our hemisphere. Here is our cerebellum. Okay, if we flip it over, we can see the internal structures here of the brain. Now, <clears throat> when we look at our list of structures that we have to know for the test, okay, so we have the frontal lobe, okay, so the frontal lobe, then we have the parietal lobe, okay, so this right here we can see coming down the side of the brain, we see the central sulcus coming down the side of the brain, separating the frontal and parietal lobes. Now, <clears throat> if we remember the frontal lobe, is responsible for personality, logical thought, complex thought, and critical thinking skills. It's also the space for lots of memory. And in this precentral gyrus here, it's for the somatic motor cortex or all voluntary motor movement. Now the parietal lobe, we see the somatosensory cortex in the postcentral gyrus. And that's responsible for body sensations which would be touch, pain, and temperature. Occipital lobe, okay, all visual information, visual input, visual memory. Temporal lobe, all auditory input, auditory sensation, auditory memory. Plus there's a little bit of smell in there as well. Now the insula is in this area here between the frontal lobe and the temporal lobe. Okay, so this area right in here is the insula. Okay, it's kind of tucked way in between. Now, the insula was responsible for some balance, some taste, and visceral organ awareness, such as making sure you understand if you have a full bladder or if you have a stomach ache. Okay. Cerebellum, all voluntary motor coordination. Now, voluntary motor skills comes out up here in that somatic motor cortex but the cerebellum is going to refine it. It's going to make sure your motions are coordinated. Okay, so it helps to balance your strength and coordination. Now internally, we see the corpus callosum connecting to the two hemispheres, allowing them to communicate. The thalamus, okay, so the thalamus is this round structure here. That's your relay center, your post office. It's also involved in memory formation. The hypothalamus, okay, the hypothalamus, again, your homeostatic center, so it's in charge of temperature, hunger, thirst, endocrine activity, autonomic activity, sex drive, and there's some smell centers in there as well. Back here, this little round button right here, that's your pineal gland producing melatonin. And again, melatonin helps to suppress your reticular formation. And the reticular formation allows you to be conscious, alert, and aware. Okay, so the reticular formation goes through the brain stem, and it helps to connect your consciousness with your environment. So if your reticular formation is on, then you are conscious. If it's off, then you are sleeping or you are unconscious or you're in a coma. Okay, now melatonin helps to shut down the reticular formation which allows you to sleep at night. Now here's the pons. Okay, pons initiates urination and regulates breathing. That's why we say the pons makes you pee. The medulla oblongata, your vitals center, regulating blood pressure, heart rate, and respiration rate. When we look at the spinal cord, Okay, so the spinal cord, we have the gray matter and the white matter. Gray, are made, gray matter is made up of cell bodies and synapses. White matter is made up of myelinated fibers. The central canal down the middle here, that's what holds CSF and allows it to circulate. Surrounding the spinal cord and the brain, we have the pia mater, which is this outer white layer. Then we have the arachnoid mater, which is the second layer, and this is where we see the CSF. That's why it looks kind of hollow in there. 
and then the Duramater is this outer leathery layer right here. Now, coming off of the spinal cord, we have these spinal nerve roots. These are spinal nerves, and then we have the ventral root and the dorsal root. Now, the ventral root is motor, the dorsal root is sensory, and we can see this large swelling here known as the dorsal root ganglion. And again, that's where we see cell bodies and synapses. And that's it for the nerve anatomy.